Hey guys, good morning. Today is December twelfth, the Friday, and today we are going to quickly look at Disney's quarter four report of this year. Um, you know that actually I'm on the favorite side for Disney Plus, right? For the streaming, this uh, fourth quarter report on the streaming performance of Disney um, is a little bit disappointing. Right. I don't want to say quite disappointing, but a little bit disappointing. Because um Disney is streaming been two years already. She's not a new guy anymore, right? So a little bit disappointing, right? So um yesterday the share price crash dropped at seven percent. So today we will quickly look at the uh performance of the uh Disney Q four report. Okay, then our Falcon portfolio. Um, very soon there will be a Thanksgiving holiday, and then next month will be Christmas, and then two thousand twenty-two. Um, I think that uh after November, the market will not be fluctuate a lot because the unit trust manager right they will, right they will start to have their vacation, and um. I think all the performance now is fixed already after the end of November. Um, our Falcon portfolio is still okay. Uh, we have 88%. Maybe there will be a few percent up and down for the coming one and a half months, but I think that's really that's what it is, right? Um, if you have any stock that you want me to uh, analyze or any subjects then related to the finance, you can leave your comment under the YouTube or email to me by US Stock Market Weekly at gmail dot com. So this is our Falcon portfolio. Um, this year we have a nineteen percent increment for uh two thousand twenty one. I hope that we can have a twenty or twenty two then finish this year. Because for even for professional one is fifteen percent per year is okay. It's not easy for you to beat the guy of Nasdaq because this guy is very strong, right? You can see the Nasdaq performance is one one hundred and three percent, and our is eighty eight percent. It's not easy for you to beat Nasdaq. If you can beat Nasdaq for ten percent, then you will be an other one buffer. Right? So <laughs> that's what it is. So today we will talk about the uh, streaming performance of Disney in the fourth quarter. Yesterday Dow Jones is a drop, but um, Nasdaq rise up a little bit. Um, to me, it got no directions. Right? When you close to the end of the year, normally it's no direction. It just up and down, up and down, something like that, right? So let us talk about some headlines first. Then we go into Disney. Um, Paytm. We've been introduced in our Hong Kong Pay program before, few months before, few months before. At the time, we still do not have a lot of data for Paytm. We just introduced the past, the history. And the some of the uh, past, actually, this is uh, very big. Paytm is the biggest e-payment in India. India has got the biggest sales of the e-payment is Paytm. It, all the shares been fully show on the final day, so uh, we will have a more detailed uh, description on this stock. In our Hong Kong Pay program, so please keep on following us, right? This is interesting to me. There is an anti Cattywood ETF just launched yesterday. So this is interesting to me because um, Cattywood's ALK ETF have a lot of stock, have a lot of stock, right? So. Does it mean that this anti Cattywood ETF doing everything in reverse to Cattywood's job, right? So, but I don't think that that means if 
if cat would bought buying this one, then they will dump it out. Why they will sell it? Why if cat would sell it, then they will buy it. Then is this a good way for you to follow? <laughs> because cat would may not all the stock be winning and may not all the stock are losing. So this is interesting to me, right? Um, I'm not suggesting for you to follow this anti Cattywood ETF because this is not making any sense, right? Not making any sense. Then you do this thing, then I do the reverse, right? You do this thing, I do the reverse. Then it's quite, quite twisted to me, right? On investment. And Vivian, um, I introduced it in Hong Kong program as well. At the time, it's not. Um, still, it is under fault, right? We know that it's under fault, and one of the biggest shareholder is Amazon. So make it so hard, and the share price pump up, even in the second day of the IPO. Um, when we have more information, we will detail it. Because I'm still thinking, EV consider, just think, for the whole world. Just thirty percent of the car, not hundred percent. Just thirty percent of the car, all changed to EV car. The market is so big. The market is so big. So I'm not in a hurry. I want to see more quarterly result first before I will buy in the EV. I'm picking up which stock is better. Definitely is not Tesla because Tesla is too high already. Right, the PE is over three hundred percent, and Elon Musk is selling. Right. It's no point for me to buy in when you know mass is selling, right? So we will keep checking on the Vivian. But I'm still thinking that um, for EV, for the cars, for the battery, right? For the AI, for the auto autopilot, for the uh, glasses, for everything, like the maybe you have a VR to control the car. Everything I'm interested in, right? But I don't think that this trend will end up in a few months. This trend, if you for all the cars in the world, thirty percent change to EV car, I think it will need at least five years or more, because you have to build the charging station. So I'm not hurry, but I will not have it for too long. I will pick up one or two and then invest. So just keep on following us, right? And yesterday, I I'm quite interested in um, social dating apps, right? You know that we have the match. We have the match. I'm still not buy uh, Bumble, right? Even match, we bought it for uh, four months. The share price fluctuate very much because their profit fluctuate very much, and they have a lot of competitions. Bumble, um, this uh. Beautiful lady came out from Tinder, and then she raised the money from the fund, and then um, invented Bumble. But you see, yesterday Bumble crashed it because the because the performance right of the Q4 is really bad. Honestly speaking, it's very bad. Not easy for them to survive because now the competition is very high. Tinder. All the apps from Match, and then the Facebook, where Facebook is doing another things. A lot of, um, actually they that are social media, not social dating app. But Facebook is doing, um, actually we should call it Meta, right? Meta is doing, um, already doing some, uh, social dating app. So it have a lot of pressure on Bumble. Although Bumble's. Right, killing is the ladies first, but I, I think it's just a gimmick. Right, it's just a gimmick. It's no matter the gentleman first or the ladies first. Then it doesn't matter. The matter is the app to widely spread it, widely spread it for the whole world, and then has the income. And I still thinking Match or Tinder is more efficient than Bumble. So why you choose Bumble? That's the one of question that Whitley has to ask herself and answer, right? Okay, we go to uh, we go into this this report. So you can see, um, even during the during the pandemic, 
Disney's price been dropped, and it strongly rises up. It strongly rises up. We all know that for the park, for the park, for the Disney characters, it doesn't matter because they are monopoly. It eventually will open one day for all the parks, right? So actually, for the parks' income and for all the licensee for all the Disney characters, I don't think that they will drop. They will. They will rise up one day because they are monopoly. No substitution. You like it, then you buy it. You want to go to the park, you go to the park. You don't like the character, you won't buy the things. So I, I, I'm not. I'm. I'm saying that this strongly rise up. Part of them is because people is thinking that one day the revenue of Disney will come back. Why? Because the pandemic. We have one day pass over, right? And the further rise up is because of the streaming, right? It's because of streaming. So, but you can see the PE ratio is two hundred and sixty-five now. What does it mean? It means the people is putting a lot of expectation on the streaming. They think that it will have a good international sales, like Netflix did before. This is what it is. But the point is, Netflix is still there. That's the problem. I think that the only competitor, only strong rival for Netflix, is Disney Plus. Disney Plus will arrive in Hong Kong、uh, November sixteen. That means four days from today. And today, the twelve,、um, Disney will update the content. Have a big issue. Big change in the content today for the states, right? But the key point is investing and entertainment is two different things. And the people is waiting for two years already. You can see when the share price goes to the top of this year, it goes down a little bit and then become flat. Why? Because people is waiting to see the streaming result after two years. Right, and the PE ratio is very high, two hundred and sixty-five. If the result is not good, then it will crash, and it crashed to seven percent yesterday. This is, in the contrary, this is Netflix. You see, Netflix PE ratio just fifty-nine, and it goes for uh. Goes for the games market. Yesterday I downloaded one from the Android market, right? But this 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 terrible. <laughs> the graphic is terrible. So if you were the investor, which one you will invest? Just from the point of view of an investor, of course it's Netflix. Why? Because it's more safe. It has the market already. It's very difficult for you to beat Netflix. Even to have, even Stephen, right? Maybe now this maybe this quarter for Disney to doing bad is because of the squat gap. I don't know. You see the squat gap makes the Netflix becomes the king again, right? This may last for I think at least till the first quarter of the next year. But the key, but but the key, the key factor is. Will Disney Plus performs better than Netflix? I think this is the key, right? Let us look at some performance metrics. So this is the condensed statement of the income, right? This is difficult for you to see, right? Because this is the letters are very small, right? The figures are very small. So I do the summary for you for the key one for the important figures. What the investor look at is the revenue increase speed. Is it increasing or is it decreasing? So you can see the revenue change. If we compare this, Q4 is from、um, August, September, then October, right? Three months. If we compare this revenue for one with one year before, the revenue increased the twenty six percent, and for the whole year increased the three percent. Then this part. I'm I'm happy, 
And for the net income change, we can't compare because last year is a loss because of the pandemic, right? So we compare for the net income rate, right? So you can see the net income rate for the Q4 is only 1.38%. And for the whole year is 3%. That means the revenue is increased, the increment of revenue is decreasing. Tapering. What happened? So let us look further. So this is for um, Disney Media Entertainment Distribution and the parks experience, whatever, right? So you can see very quickly, you can see the Disney parks increased a lot. It's normal because last year is the lockdown, right? No matter this year increased 99% or 199%, then this is normal. But right? this is normal because Disney is over 100 years. So if you go to the park, you go to the park. If you not go to the park, then you not go to the park, right? So that part, no need to worry, because that is for 100 year business already. So what the market concentrating on is the Disney media and entertainment distribution. This is the new one. You can see, for one year, for one year, the revenue decreased only 5%. But for only for the fourth quarter, it decreased, it. the revenue decreased it 39%, especially on the operating income. That means on the net income, it will decrease furthermore. What happened? Mainly because of the fixed expenditure. Fixed expenditure. That means maybe the server, distribution channel, prom promotion, right? Even Disney has to do the promotion. So the fixed cost still is bigger than the, than, than the fixed cost increment is still high. So that's the reason. So the net income may be lost even more badly. Then we go further for the details of the entertainment and the media. There is few, there are few parts inside. Linear network and direct to customer is for the streaming. For the streaming. For the devices, and then you have the course directly have your streaming to the customer, to your TV, to your PC, to your uh, cell phone, to your smartphone, to your iPad, whatever, right? So you can see on the uh, lower part, you see the linear network. One year decreased 11%, the operation income, and then fourth quarter still decreased 11%, no increment, right? Not improved it. For direct to customer, this is very bad. One year, the operating income increased 42%, but in the fourth quarter, suddenly it decreases 68%. So what happened? So make the operating income decrease 39%. This is what the market very concerned of, right? Suddenly it turns very bad in the, in the fourth quarter. And this is killing. This is killing. You see, when we see the upper data, upper past data, for Disney, for Disney, the number of subscribers, right, increased at 60% in the fourth quarter. It's a good thing, right? ESPN Plus increased the 66, right? And the, and the Hula, Hulu increased the 22%, right? All okay to me. But suddenly, when we look at the lower part, you see the lower part is the average monthly revenue per pay subscriber for the fourth quarter. That means to me, I subscribed at Disney Plus. How much did I pay per month? Suddenly it decreased 9%. That means the number of people joined it increased it. But the people spent decreased it, especially for Disney Plus. For ESPN Plus, 4%, and for Hula, just 1%, forget about it, right? 1%, forget about it, right? So what happened? I think the reason is because um, I'm going to subscribe for Disney Plus when it launched in Hong Kong. But 
I may not subscribe for one year. I may only subscribe for one month, right? And for a, for a cheaper pen, right? Not the highest pen. So the reason is, for the last quarter, a lot of people, you know that you cannot subscribe for both at the same time because you know time to watch, right? unless you have no job, unless you are retired, right? There's no point for you to subscribe both. So you only will subscribe for one, Netflix or Disney Plus. That means a lot of people, they subscribe it. They subscribe it. But they subscribe for the for the cheapest pen, or they are not subscribing for one year. Maybe they subscribe one month. Or Netflix is very hot. And then I stopped it this month. And then I subscribe for Netflix. Netflix for one month and two months and then three months. And then Netflix is bad. And then when Disney has a good program, they change back. And now the key is the squad game. The key is the squad game. So this is killing because this is not continuing. Right? We we want we want an income. We want um revenue is um continuing. Sustainable. Seems it's not sustainable. And now it's beat by Netflix. So it makes the investors quite disappointing. That means you don't have a better program than Netflix and Netflix policy to go into the culture of South Korea, now it's going to the culture of Japan, right? Maybe then go into the culture of Australia, and then they use the local for making their own film. That is successful. You can see the squad game. Maybe there's another successful one, Masterpiece in Japan. Unless there's a very big, very super... A movie come up from Disney, from Marvel Hero, something like that. Otherwise, it cannot beat Netflix. That's what people now, after the fourth quarter's result, is thinking. So, um, what I can say on the um, stock price point of view is the premium previous gave to Disney seems too high. That's what I'm thinking. I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm not saying that it will crash immediately. No, no. But the point is the premium that gave to Disney, because previous Disney is not for streaming. Disney is for itself, for the park, for the souvenir, and for the content license. But now, if it relies on streaming, then it has to come into direct competition with um, Amazon, and then with Netflix. Then we will the thing differently. And after two years, the people start to thinking it may not be as strong as Netflix. It's easy to say that go into international for the whole world. But Netflix is there. Netflix is there. That's the problem. And a lot of people still they they may they may say that okay, um previously Netflix also pass for that difficult part. I agree to that. But the point is, if this is true, and this is going to be true, then the premium now gave to Disney is too high. It's quite obvious, right? It's quite obvious. So um, I'm not suggesting to buy Disney stock now. We still have to see. What we have to see is um, what, how, when the um, fixed expenditure will reach the peak, right? I think it's the uh, fixed expenditure. I have confidence in the Marvel heroes and in all the Disney characters because they are unique, right? Because they are unique. If you love that, then you love that. If you not love that, then you not love that, right? So um, if you want to invest in Disney, I think you still have to wait. If for um, investor. You ask me to choose between Netflix and Disney, I will ask you to choose Netflix. Because the increment is still nearly the same, but it's more cheap. Am I right, right? Okay, thank you for watching. And if you um, think this video is helpful, please share it to your friends and give me a like if you like it. 
and then、um, share to your friends. And please help me to press the subscribe button and then press the bell icon next to it. So whenever there is a new video uploaded, you will get notified immediately by YouTube. Okay, we share up to here, and I hope everyone have a very peaceful weekend. Let us see next Friday. Bye bye.